I've been growing my hair out. I don't know how I feel about it. I got my hair done today and I love getting my hair done, but I'm not sure what I think about the length. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Pierce Family Channel. My name is Jade and today I'm gonna be talking about books. I've really been wanting to like take a moment to do like my favorite, my top 10 favorite books of all time or something. However, all of the books that have been on my living room shelves for years are currently packed up and like put in boxes in closets because Isaac has started pulling things down. So those bottom bookshelves in our living room are just covered in his toys and I really don't want to go through all those boxes and pull out books and I don't really have time to do all that. But when I was packing those books up I pulled out all the books that I haven't read and I put them in our bedroom. So what I've done instead is gone through that stack and picked out the top 10 books I want to read this year. I'm not gonna go through these in any particular order, it's just the order in which I pulled them out of the stack. First one on the stack is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Probably heard of this one. A lot of people have read this book and as you saw on the cover it says now a major motion picture. I haven't seen the movie, I still haven't read the book, but all I really know is that John Green went to college and was friends with the author and he recommended it to me so I need to read it. Love Letters to the Dead by Ava Delaria. So this book is about a teenager whose sister has died young and for English class she has to write a letter to a dead person. She chooses Kurt Cobain but then kind of throughout the novel it sounds like she writes a lot of letters to lots of dead people and this kind of helps her figure some things out, especially about mourning, which I think is going to be very interesting. The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. I just think this book is so beautiful. I can't tell you why I bought it in the first place, probably other than I liked the cover. On the back it says, Four very different lives are about to become entangled. Ruth wants to be remembered. Dora wishes she were invisible. Alice can't bring herself to leave and Hank is running away. So kind of contradictory people who want different things. I really like stories and like movies and all types of things where different stories intertwine to become one. So I think this sounds really interesting and I can't wait to read it. Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer. I actually have read the beginning of this book a couple of times. My brother got this for me for Christmas two years ago. I even own the audiobook. <laughs> so I am making it my mission this year to finish this book. So when he asks me again at Christmas if I've read it, I can say yes. An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I'm an absolute huge fan of the Green Brothers. This is another book that I've started. Y'all, being a mom makes finishing books difficult sometimes. But I love the concept of it already. Um, this might be the first one that I work on this year. I love John Green. I love Hank Green. I've been watching the Vlog Brothers since I was a teeny tot tiny teenager. So I'm excited to read this. I just have to actually sit down and do it. What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. And it's a signed first edition. I had never heard of Becky Albertalli until, or however you say her name, I'm sorry. The movie Love, Simon. I had previously heard of the book that she wrote, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, but I had never read it. And once the movie previews started going out, I actually sat down and read the book and I, Oh my god, I consumed it. It was so good. It's probably one of my top favorites right now. Um, I probably read it three times last year when Isaac was a newborn and he slept most of the day and he slept on me for most of the day and I read it on my phone. So I'm really excited. This is her newest book. It came out at the end of last year so I'm really excited to read this too. And it's a romance novel. And I'm a sucker for a good romance novel. Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour. This is another John Green recommendation that I have not read but have owned for a while and maybe that I've read the beginning of as well. And okay so it says in the back, I want you to do something with the place. Something epic. Is Emmy is staying at her brother's apartment um and she is 
From what I understand, it's kind of this adventure. She goes on kind of a mystery solving adventure with her friend Charlotte about this Hollywood film legend. It says they uncover a decades old secret and the potential for something truly epic, love. This has been on my stack for a while as well. I feel like this is just like a video of me talking about all the books I've owned for years and have never read. Um, like this one. I've owned this one for a long time. The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. This book is so popular. The top of the back says, every few decades a book comes along that changes the lives of its readers forever. How have I not read it yet? I especially want to read it because at my friend Ellen's wedding, one of the readings was a passage from this book and I still haven't read it. So yes, I'm really excited about this one too. Lots of people know what it's all about, but I need to. The Last Forever by Deb Coletti. I've been a huge Deb Coletti fan for a long time. Oh, you can tell from the bookmark in here, I've also started this book. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Endings and beginnings sit so close to each other that it's sometimes impossible to tell which is which. I love that concept so much. It says it has to do with kind of her moving on past her mother's death. Ends up, she and her father end up going on this crazy road trip and what happens along the way and what happens at the destination and yada 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 and it sounds really good and I love Deb Coletti so it should be really interesting. And then the last one I'm putting on my stack next to my bedside table, All Our Wrong Todays by Ellen Mastai. Elon, Ellen. I picked this up. I actually want to read a piece of the blurb because it sounds so interesting. It says... Tom Barron lives in the 2016 that people in the 1950s imagined we would have. A version of our world where technology has solved all of humanity's problems. Yet Tom can't seem to find his place in this perfect utopia and feels like a constant disappointment to his brilliant but distant father. So what's really interesting to me is that in the 1950s, 2016 was imagined as a utopia, which we all know was not the case. That's the world that he does live in. But then, so he gets turned down by a girl and he finds his dad's time machine and then he ends up doing something stupid. And he finds himself stranded in what seems to be a terrible dystopian alternate reality, what we immediately recognize as our 2016, the all too familiar real world. Tom is desperate to fix his mistake and return to the 2016 he knows with its moving sidewalks and flying cars until he discovers wonderfully unexpected versions of his family, his career, and the woman who might just be the love of his life. So it's kind of about choice and the multiverse and I'm really, really interested. This is up there, really far up there for me to read. I want to read this so badly. I'm going to read it this year, maybe even this coming week. So those are all the physical books that I already own that I plan to read this year. I of course have a long, long list on the internet, not to mention the stack of the other 15 that I own that are sitting on that desk over there. If you're interested in hearing what I have to think about these, make sure you leave a comment below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.